Today, I'm going to talk about risk reduction of item transaction page in Melukali. Hello, everyone. My name is Paipo. I'm a front engineer in Melukali, and I've been working in item transaction page team for around two years. Here is the outline of my talk. I'll first talk about what is item transaction page and what makes it complicated. Then I'll bring up what kind of risks involved in the item transaction page. At the end, I'll share with you some ways we've adopted to reduce those risks. And the purpose of this talk is to give you a brief overview of what kind of measures you can take to protect the critical page of your website. So first of all, let me explain what is item transaction page. Um, uh, Melukali is a marketplace app of second-handed items. After the buyer buy an item from the seller, and the buyer have to pay, seller have to deliver the item, and both, both of them have to review each other. Those mentioned use cases after a transaction is created are all happening in the item transaction page. By seeing this screenshot, you might wonder, um, is it just a single page? What makes it even difficult? You're probably not alone, because um, I guess some members from other teams may come up with the same confusion sometimes. As a matter of fact, we have around seven front engineers to maintain this very single page. So it definitely has something overwhelming. So today, I'm here to unveil a secret to tell you what makes this page complicated. In order to get to the item transaction page, to begin with, the seller has to list an item with Mercari app, and the buyer will buy the item from the seller. That's when the journey of an item transaction page starts. As a side note, in Melukali, you can sell all kinds of stuff from clothes, shoes, smartphone, to big furnitures, or even cars. And for different item types, it might involve slightly different transaction flow. For example, if you are selling a car in the Melukali's app, the seller and the buyer may need to exchange some ownership documents or other related stuff to complete the transaction. Those customized flow adds some more complexity to the item transaction page as well. Besides, a transaction has its own life cycle, namely transaction statuses. It mainly includes payment, delivery, review to complete. For each transaction status, both buyers and sellers have some task to complete in order to move the transaction flow forward. Furthermore, when sellers try to send the item to a buyer, there are different delivery options out there. Melukali cooperated with some third-party delivery companies, such as Japan Post Office, Yamato, or even some warehouses, so that depending on different shipping methods sellers choose, there are different procedures for them in order to send the item. At the app, we mainly have three different aspects of the item transaction page, including different roles like buyer and seller, different transaction statuses, payment, delivery, review, and done, and different shipping methods. So to give some examples, when you open the item transaction page, you might be a buyer who is about to pay for the item in the convenience store, or you might be a seller who is about to send an item to the buyer using the post office. All different states may contain different information and actions for our users in the item transaction page. If you do the math and check the possible states combination, you'll be more than a hundred states in this one single page. Not to mention we um, even have other user scenarios which should be dealt with in the item transaction page. For example, when either buyer and seller wants to cancel the transaction, there is a cancellation flow in the transaction page. Also, due to the fact that the mutual review feature between buyers and seller is considered an important user experience within Melukali's app. We also design an automatic review mechanism to facilitate this review process. We also need to handle other tedious stuff, such as customer inquiries, or um, when sellers ship the item, they might need to publish or scan the QR code within item transaction page. Add everything up, it makes a quite complicated item transaction page. So now you know the secret of item transaction page. Next, let's get to the topic of risks. I'm going to talk about risks in terms of item transaction page. First questions you might ask is, um, why does a page even have risks? Having risks means it's an important page and 
We don't want to make mistakes in this page. But why item transaction page is important to Melikali? It's mainly because the main revenue and deals comes from this page. So if item transaction page breaks, Melikali will probably lose deals and a lot of business opportunity. In order to reduce the risk in the item transaction page, let's first recognize the main source of risks. I categorize them into two sources. First of all, we provide the wrong information to our customers. Then either buyers or sellers feel confused about what to do next and get frustrated. At the end, they may want to cancel the transaction. The other source of risk can be generalized as blockers, such as buyers cannot pay, sellers cannot send the delivery request, or um, delivery companies fail to pick up items, you name it. Those blockers may also encourage, encourage our customers to cancel the transaction. No matter which of them happens, it might result in uh, Melikali cannot close the deals and miss business opportunities. So those mentioned above are risk involved in the item transaction page. And here comes to our next question. How do we reduce the risk? As I just mentioned, there are two sources of risks. One prevents our customers to see the right state while the other prevents our customer from completing the transaction. To reduce the risk of wrong information, you just need to make sure your customer can see the right page. And to reduce the risk of blockers, you only need to make sure your customers can complete the transaction flow. So the real question here is, how do you make sure the two risks mentioned above not to happen? It's actually quite straightforward to be honest. In order to do risk reduction, you have to verify your work. And I would say this is the key takeaway for today. This concept is way too simple that people often forget about it. When you contribute to an existing code base, how do you make sure your work doesn't break the code base? You must find ways to verify your work, right? However, human beings make mistakes. So even if you believe you've already verified your work, things can still go south. And that's why you sometimes hear people saying, oh, I've already verified my work and it works on my machine. So to be more thorough and scientific, you should adopt different approaches at different points of time to verify the same result. If you just do the same verification multiple times, it's hard to find the blind spot. That's why I suggest that you should verify your work in different phases with different strategies. In our cases, we ask um, us three questions. How do we verify our work while developing a feature, before the release, and after the release? And we came up with different testing portfolio to verify our work at these three phases. Once again, it's totally depending on the product and the size of your team to come up with the best plan for you. Thank you.